The Automatic House Option System is a great tool for automating your architectural drawing sets, but we're often asked, how does it work with framing? In a lot of cases, if the options are very complicated, like if you're doing height changes and stretch options, then we recommend solving the architectural model first and then generate the framing after the house has been solved. But if you're doing simple options where you're just swapping in and out different wall layouts and different components in the building, then there is a way that we can attach uh, pre-framed panels to an option and have them swap in and out as your options are solved. I'm going to demonstrate just a very simple wall layout and show how to do this, how to attach some wall panels to options. So I'm going to start by just creating a, a new project here. I'll call this wall options. And I'm basing this on our template ZL project. So I'm just going to start by drawing a simple rectangular wall layout. I'll go with a 2x6 bearing wall. And we'll throw in some doors and windows just to make it look a little interesting. Okay, so now I just have my base house with just four exterior walls, just to keep things simple. Now to prepare for the options, first thing I'm going to do is cut out the section of the wall that I'm going to be swapping out. So I'll select this wall, right click, and go to cut wall, and select the location where I want to cut it, and same thing on the other side here. the next thing I want to do is add a little gap in this wall break. This is going to serve two purposes. First is, well, typically you want to have some kind of tolerance when you have end-to-end -end panel breaks, um, but this is also going to help prevent these walls from merging when we solve the options. So it doesn't have to be very big. I'm just going to use an eighth of an inch. And now I'm ready to create my first option. So I'm going to go to the Option tab, click New, select the components that are going to belong to this option. So I'm just holding down the Control key and selecting the wall, doors, and windows, and Confirm. And now I'm going to select an origin location. So I'll just use this center line right over here. And what is our option condition? So I'm going to say we're creating our elevation B. So elevation A is going to be the default, the one that we've already drawn, and now we're creating elevation B. And I'm going to uncheck walls here so that the walls are not merged when this option is solved. And now I'll locate this option box somewhere down here. So it just moved out my elevation A down to the bottom, and my elevation B is now attached to my base house. Uh, I can even change this to, say, elevation A. Uh, if I go back to the Options menu, Edit Option Data, click on this, and get rid of the default selection, and select elevation A. You don't have to do this, but it's just nice when you see an elevation A and an elevation B instead of default and elevation B. So now I'm going to set up my elevation B and let's say this is going to be a bump out. So I will add some more wall cuts. I'll select this wall. Let's move actually this window over so I have a little more room. And then we'll do cut wall right here. And I'll do another cut wall over here. Okay, and then we can grab this wall and slide it out. And I'll just add a couple of walls on the sides. We'll use the same wall type. And I gotta turn off my rectangular wall shortcut. And I also need to flip my wall. 
Make sure the siding is on the outside of the house. Do the same thing over here. And then we'll trim up those corners. You don't actually have to trim up the corners if you don't care about the uh, architectural layout if you want to just lap the corners if you know all you're concerned is how the panels are going to be lapped in that corner um, that's another option but I will do the uh, nice architectural trimming here in this example so I'm just going to create those corners and let's slide this window over here All right, so now I'm going to add the new walls to that Elevation B option. So I'm going to go back to the Options tab, click the Edit Option Components function, select one of the walls that I know already belongs to that option, and then I'm going to hold the Control key and add these additional components that I've drawn, and confirm. And so I can test this. I'll use the Activate function and we'll activate elevation A, confirm. We'll see that those swap out nicely back and forth. And if we want to clean things up here, let's adjust these option boxes. So we'll use this size function. And we can make this elevation B box bigger to include our layout. And then I'm going to move my elevation A box. Let's move it up top. So it looks a little nicer. Okay, so now the fun part is creating the panels and adding panels to the options. So before you do that, actually, if you have more options that you want to create on this layout, then go ahead and, and do the same process and add, add the additional um, walls that you're going to be swapping in and out. Um, but then once all that is done, then we go on to this next step where we generate the panels and generate the parts. So on the modeling tab, I go to the wall framing uh, menu, select generate panels, click OK, and I'm just going to hit Control A to select all the walls and confirm, then generate the parts. So back at wall framing, generate parts. And again, control A and confirm. Now when it's generating the double top plates, uh, if you have it set to do lapping double top plates, it's only going to create the, the lapping space for the active option. The one that's inactive will get the flush cut. So you'll have to go in and modify those. If we switch to the framing model, You'll see on the active option, we have the space for those, well, it's actually this one here, those laps, but this one doesn't. So that, that one gets the flush cut. So what I'm going to do is just activate that option. You'll get this uh, prompt here to add that components were added to options. And if you want to uh, continue checking, you can just click no on this. And that's just, uh, it's adding those framing components to the options. And now I'm going to activate this option here. And we can see, so if I want to have the, uh, the lapping double top plate here, I'm just going to delete this, this double top plate. And so now we have the space for the, um, the field fill to go in on top of those those end panels there. And so now we have our option model done. And when it comes time for a customer to come in and say, I like this house, but I want it with elevation B, um, then what we're gonna do is run the job. So on the options menu, we go under the solve menu, create and solve job. So I'll save this project here. And we're going to create, let's say this is customer one. This is our job. And we're basing this on the um, 
this project here, this option project, so this is the one that we called wall options. So what it's going to do is copy this project, create this new project called customer1, and then ask for the options. So we're creating the new project, and then which options do we want? So let's say this customer wants this house with elevation B. Click OK, it solves it, it freezes it, so it's actually deleting all the other options. And then we can go on and create the drawing sets and the panel drawings. So now it's just updating all the views, elevations, sections, layouts. And then we can go to on the modeling tab. No, sorry. And then we can go to output, panel drawings, select all the walls. So I just held down the shift key, selected the first and last, then right click, create, select which panel template we want to use, and click OK. So you you don't want to generate the drawings, the panel drawings in the option model. You want to wait till after the options have been solved and then generate the drawings in the solved project. So now that's done. Save the project and then we can generate our PDF of our panel drawings. And that's how you can optionalize wall panels.